me, Jesus. Help me. <laughs> hey, fam. What's up? What's up? What's up? This is Robert Anton here. RobertAnton.com coming to you with your no frills, the voice commentary from a singer. Yes, sir. It's the fourth night of the blind auditions. They have gone so far by the end of the night. But at the beginning of the fourth night, we started out the show with Pharrell having eight on his team while Blake and Gwen have seven and Adam has six. And the coaches had a quick discussion before the artists were introduced or the contestants were introduced. First up for the night, we had Catrice Trinidad. She was 15. She did At Last by Etta James, a song I've heard many, many times, including this past Saturday at a gig, right? And the girl tore it up. Let me tell you, shout out to Claire. Hey, Claire. She she had a sweet layered tone when she started out the song and after only like one line Blake, Pharrell and Gwen all chimed in for her and she had Pharrell standing before she even finished. She was so poised and really did a good job on the runs and showing some vocal and emotional range. Very very nice especially for a 15 year old. Pharrell said he'd been dreaming for an artist like her all his career and got on his knees to beg her to be on the team. Blake told her she's born to be a star. Gwen said she's almost a perfect singer and Catrice chose Pharrell because she felt like she learned a lot from him. Then Ethan Butler was 25. He did Beneath Your Beautiful by Labyrinth featuring Emily Sande. And he pulled out his guitar and dedicated his song to his sister. Some nice tones were coming out of his body when he started. So smooth, laid back, and crisp. Adam and Blake turned for him first. I liked his rhythm and how he just gave a full show in such a short period. I got everything that I needed right there. I was like, all right. Adam stood for him and he was so excited and called him soulful and complimented his pocket. You know, they like the pocket up on the voice. Blake told him he's more than ready for this competition and Ethan chose Adam for his coach because he told him different things he could work on. Then we had Tanner Linford. He was 17. He did When You Say Nothing At All by Alison Krauss and he auditioned before last season and didn't get a chair to turn and his voice is changing still. He was talking about oh my voice has been changing but even while he was talking then he was getting little cracks and little things in his voice. I'm like your voice is still changing boy. I could hear the nerves when he started out and see his hands shaking while I look at the mic and stuff like that. I liked his vocal quality though and he was holding all those long notes out really nicely very little vibrato was just kind of holding them straight Blake turned for him at the very last moment and recognized so it was like oh yeah you know how Blake is yeah I know you <laughs> <laughs> then he went up to give him a high five. Gwen thought it was a girl singing, while Adam said his improvement was noteworthy and said he has a lot of potential. Pharrell also thought it was a girl and said he poured his heart out. Blake told him he had awesome control and great pitch. Oh, it was good to see him back. This is Robert Anton, RobertAnton.com. I gotta ask early for them thumbs to let you guys know that I need them thumbs. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. I'm glad you enjoyed the commentary. Let's talk down in the comments. Next up, we had Rome Bowers, 37, did Oh Pretty Woman by Roy Oberson and he's trained in opera so it was really interesting to hear him singing something else and it worked for me kind of. He played his guitar and really performed the song. It was very dramatic. He really got into it and everything. He had a few wobbly notes in there but I was enjoying his performance and no coaches turned for him. Adam and Blake felt like he was more copying the artist than being himself. They were saying you know he should have found more things to do outside of what was going on. Gwen said she thought his voice was interesting but not unique enough for her team. Jean Kelly was up next. She was 29. She did Already Gone by Kelly Clarkson and her voice was so pleasing and she was performing the song to the crowd doing her thing. It shows that she's been on stage a lot. I liked all the little inflections and the different tones she brought in this performance. You know she would cover it a little bit here. It'd be kind of straight here. Give me a little, a little, little vibrato there. She was really working her voice. Blake and Gwen chimed in the very last second and I was like why? What's going on? Y'all should be chiming in. I'm like, as soon as she started singing she sounded so good. I was like y'all y'all tell me what's going on. I, I was crazy. I thought they weren't going to turn for her for a minute. I was like, I was like oh, uh, that would have just broke my heart. Blake said he loved her voice but was on the fence about what she could do until she hit and held out the big no. We had to wait for the big note to see that she could do something. Gwen said she could hear similarities in their voices and Jean chose Gwen because she grew up listening to her music. Then we had Chris Jamison. He was 20. He did Gravity by John Mayer and I love that he started out with the big high note, you know, like it just, just blew us out of the water, got everything focused on him. Then he went on down and started doing his thing. Blake and Pharrell turned around right after that and Adam turned when he swooped up into this nice falsetto tone. This was such a well-placed technical 
performance with a lot of love and emotion. Gwen turned around near the end and she said he's really cute. Adam said the Alan Stone scream he did is why he turned around. Pharrell told him his voice is crazy and Chris chose Adam because he gave him things he could improve on in his critique. Then we had Craig Wayne Boyd. He was 35. He did the Whiskey Ain't Working by Travis Trick. And he looks like a rocker and he sounds like a country singer but he came out with some really nice rough notes that showed that he had a bit of an edge. Blake was the first to turn for him then Pharrell. Pharrell called him super soulful. Blake told him he could bring the edge to country music and naturally Craig chose Blake. Good choice. Next up we had Teeny Gray. He was 38. Teeny big guy. He did Sarah Smile by Hall and Oates and I was certainly surprised when he started singing because he has such a warm and soulful tone and he handled the song with kid gloves giving it just the right amount of power but then he got up into the top or higher notes and he started to choke on them and he didn't quite get out the falsetto so no coaches ended up turning for him. Gwen said his voice was amazing but noticed that it started strong and then got wiggly near the end. She said this is her this were her words now she said wiggly. Blake said the falsetto kept him from hitting his button. Then we had Jerome Johnson, Sidney Cubitt and Aaron Pfeiffer who all got FaceTime but they did not get a coast to term and Toya Jones followed it up. She was 29. She did one and only by Adele and this was a church girl with a church inspired song. I loved when it came in with the piano organ whatever was going on and she was all up in it. I like the weight of her voice and she was up there giving that the full force of her personality and her vocal performance. Pharrell chimed in halfway through the song and then she hit the big note and Adam turned around. Pharrell said she sang from the heart and painted a canvas and Toya chose Pharrell for her coach because he spoke to her spirit. Amanda Lee Pierce came up next. She was 29. She did Put the Gun Down by ZZ Ward and I was all up in her story and even got a little misty eye you know at some point. I was like oh my god and then she started singing and quickly lifted my spirit. She was just lots of spunk, a very unique tone and I was waiting for a little more depth from her you know for me to give me some nice rounded big lower notes but I guess we will get that hopefully we will get that from her later on because Gwen turned for her and said she loved the tone of her voice and enjoyed her stage presence. Then we had the montage with Gianna Salvato going to team Gwen, Rebecca Samarin going to team Adam and Grant Gonzer he was 16 going to team Blake and the final performance of the night was from Jonathan Wyndham he was 22 he did say something by Great Big World featuring Christina Aguilera and he was right up in the emotion of the song as soon as he started from the first word very sweet and tender I wrote haltingly beautiful. Blake was the first to turn for him then Adam and Gwen followed suit and Pharrell brought up the rear then he kind of started shaking when all of them had turned around but he held his composure and finished out the song softly but you can still see he was shaking he started putting the mic here to, get, to keep from shaking it was so nice and it was so sweet. Gwen said she loved his sincerity and the emotion was coming through. Adam said he had a delicate vulnerability. Pharrell told him it became his song. Blake said he could feel the desperation in his performance and called him an artist. And Jonathan chose Adam as his coach. There we have it. Night 4 is over. Let me know what you thought down in the comments if you found any favorites yet. This is Robert Anton, RobertAnton.com. Thank you guys so much for joining me for the commentary. I will see you on Monday 8 p.m. I'm out. Peace.